Greetings and salutations. Thank you for lending an ear to The Voice of the Times this Saturday, November 21, 2020. For today's editorial, the DOLE must heed calls to protect delivery riders. A demonstration earlier this week by several hundred delivery riders of the popular Food Panda delivery app drew the attention of the public and organized labor to the plight of these workers who, along with their counterparts in other services such as Grab, have become indispensable to the economy. The Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, whose responsibility it is to ensure the welfare of all workers, can no longer ignore the exploitation of these hardworking men and women by the hugely profitable businesses that employ them. In a public statement on Thursday, the Associated Labor Unions Trade Union Congress of the Philippines, or ALUTUCP, took up the cudgels for the delivery app riders, appealing to Congress and DOLE to offer basic workers' protections to them, which are lacking due to the not exactly legal but not quite ethical terms under which most of them are employed. In the statement, ALUTUCP National Executive Vice President Gerard Senyo said, We all saw and felt how these writers provided us convenience in our day-to-day -day lives. They are keeping the economy moving, particularly during the COVID-19 Coronavirus Disease 2019 quarantine lockdown. Yet, they have no fixed wages and social protection benefits standards and are devoid of work safety and health standards for their well-being. The reason for this, the labor organization explained, is that the app operators who employ the delivery riders and drivers classify them as independent contractors or more cynically, business partners, which exempts them from legal obligations to provide standard wages, benefits, and working terms and conditions. The delivery and transport app business has exploded during the pandemic with the growth in online commerce, spurred by community quarantines and restrictions on transportation and movement. This has also been a lifesaver to thousands of workers displaced from other jobs, as many have been able to find work with the delivery services. There is strong precedent for imposing the already existing labor regulations on delivery app services and compelling them to treat their vital workers like formal employees with the basic protections that classification entails. A number of U.S. states, faced with similar frustrations from drivers for services such as Uber and Lyft, have dismissed the company's arguments that their people are independent contractors and mandated that they follow labor regulations. The affected companies have complained bitterly that the regulations are costly, but on the other hand, none have curtailed their operations as a result. On the contrary, they are, as their counterparts in the Philippines, still among the most profitable and fastest expanding businesses in otherwise dreary economic conditions brought about by the pandemic. We are confident that the DOLE and other responsible agencies will respond favorably to the riders' call for the same protections that are afforded to any other worker. We can only wonder why they have not done so already because, like most every one of us, the concerned officials have certainly benefited personally at some point during these trying months from the services they offer. By the same token, the companies in question need not necessarily wait to be directed by the government to treat their employees fairly. The public understands that the people who deliver their food and other items they've purchased online and provide them transportation from place to place are people like themselves and are likely to take a very dim view of a service provider's prioritizing profits over its people's well-being. Public opinion can be a powerful thing, particularly when it's expressed in spending decisions and particularly in a highly competitive market that, as it has developed over the past several months, offers consumers numerous options. Food for thought, delivered free of charge. We all owe the people who have made our lives more comfortable during these times a heartfelt thank you. And their employers and government officials responsible for their fair treatment owe them the full protection of the relevant laws. We urge all concerned to swiftly do what is necessary to ensure that. And that's the editorial for Saturday, November 21, 2020. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print. Subscribe to our digital edition or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and listen to The Voice of the Times.